Hello everyone and welcome back to DBX Labs. In today's video I will be showing you guys how you can find, feed, and raise praying mantises from the Utheka. Now, although most of my videos are strictly chemistry and energetics related, I do have some other sub hobbies like beekeeping. And in addition to beekeeping, I have consistently raised, fed, bred, and even sold praying mantises over the past five years. This is something that I kind of want to put on this channel because I have a lot of experience doing it. And in this series, I will show you guys how you can raise praying mantis to adulthood. Now to start off, it's important that you find a praying mantis egg case or utheka at the right time of the year. An utheka is usually laid by a female praying mantis in the fall of the previous year that you'll find a praying mantis egg case. And the egg cases typically do not degrade over time. Even years later, they'll look the same. So you do want to really look at the front of the utheka if there's an opening at the front or a line of openings. This would mean that the egg case has already yielded some hatchlings and it's probably not going to release anymore anytime soon. From my experience, the lighter color of the Utheka, the higher the chances that it's a fertile egg that hasn't hatched any hatchlings yet. Now the proper name for praying mantis hatchlings is actually called nymphs. And what these are, are they're in the L1 stage. Praying mantises are generally categorized in the L1 to L8 stages. Each L stage corresponds to a different number of molts that the praying mantis has had in its lifetime. The more molts, the larger the size of the praying mantis and the greater chance it's going to make it to adulthood. Now you're going to want to find a Nutheca in an open field with tall grasses. You can also find them in big bushes in areas that you've seen praying mantises before. If you find the eggs in the early winter, that's not a problem. Just put them in a paper bag and put them in the fridge until spring. During the spring, you can take them out and put them in a container for them to hatch later on. If it's a warm winter, they're probably going to hatch in maybe late April. But if it's a really cold winter, they could hatch as late as June. Generally, the rule of thumb is the nymphs will come out of the Utheka four to eight weeks after the first time it reaches over 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Once the mantises do hatch, you're going to have a lot of nymphs in one container, and they don't really eat for the first few days or the first week or so. And they don't have to, really. Uh, their metabolism isn't nearly as high as other flying insects that have to keep on buzzing around constantly. So they can really live off of a little bit of food for quite a while. Once they do get hungry, it won't be a concern to feed them all the time, especially if you're just trying to raise a few praying mantises to adulthood, because they will start to cannibalize each other, and that's just a fact of life. They're going to do it regardless if you put food in there or not. And generally, if you have really small nymphs at the L1 stage, they're not going to be able to... Uh, eat flies and larger insects that you put in there. The only thing you could really buy is wingless fruit flies that you could buy online, but you can just as easily poke some holes in a small container holding some fruit, and fruit flies will naturally just start to lay their eggs and accumulate inside that container. You can then take that container, put it in the freezer for a couple minutes. The fruit flies won't die, but they'll be slowed down enough that you can easily pick them out one by one and give them to a praying mantis. If you want to put the vast majority of the praying mantises into a garden and keep a couple, the ones you put in the garden will do a good job of eating aphids and larger insects as they grow up. And then eventually you'll have hopefully quite a few, but generally it doesn't get more than like one to two from each Utheka. In such a scenario that you only keep a few praying mantises to raise, you can use a little bit of honey on a stick do note that you have to have pasteurized honey. That way you don't give the praying mantises bacterial infections at a young age. And uh, just tap the honey on the mouth of the praying mantis. Even when it's really small, 
uh, they should be able to keep themselves out of the honey and not get themselves drowned in it. And what they'll do is they're, they're kind of like cats. They'll groom themselves occasionally. And once they get something sticky on themselves, they'll surely start grooming themselves and in the process, lick it up and uh, their man mandibles will get to work. And once they taste it, they'll like it and they'll continually eat the honey. I genuinely think that raising praying mantises is a fun experience for all ages. And if you want to get into it, it's something anyone can do. You just have to go outside and find an egg case, which really isn't that hard to do. If you like this video and you want to see further videos on my praying mantises and how I raise them, please like this video and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.